friends, remember the last time we discussed polycystic ovarian syndrome and the associated clinical scenario? All right. Now today we are going to discuss something that is similar but not so similar. So there's subtle difference. The difference here you will appreciate is the clinical presentation and the clinical profile of the woman. All right. So let us see. A 30 year old woman. So that difference there. A 30 year old woman comes to the OPD with complaint of abnormal hair growth over face and breasts this time. It has been progressively increasing over the past six months that she has to use hair removal creams every 15 days or so. She has had no periods for the past three months. Her cycles have been regular in the past. She has done a home-based urine pregnancy test and that is negative. Now, what is the differential diagnosis in this scenario and how do we proceed? All right. So, I would say that yes, obesity, which was the differential diagnosis the first time still remains. Okay. PCOS as the differential diagnosis, I would not take it off the table completely, I would say it still remains. But yes, of course, that is the beauty of differential diagnosis, right? The points in favor and the points against. So PCOS is, uh, yes, there it is a differential, but it is much less likely. Now, why is PCOS less likely in this scenario? The woman is 30 year old. The problem is something that has emerged right now. So her cycles have been regular in the past. In fact, the problem with her menstruation has not happened, you know, um, something that has not happened since the very beginning of menarche, but something that has happened only in the past three months. And another important factor um, is the fact that the hair growth, hair growth also seems to be progressively increasing over the past six months signifying much more androgen. The hair growth involves the breasts as well signifying increased amount of androgen. So in polycystic ovarian syndrome the androgens are increased definitely so but usually the androgens are less than 150 uh, you know nanograms per deciliter. So in the lesser range increase but in the lesser range. So that is what is important to remember. Now the second and third differential diagnosis which should always be ruled out whenever the cycles become abnormal, whenever there is increased uh, androgen in the body, suspected increased androgen in the body is again those thyroid disorders need to be ruled out, all right? Also please rule out increased prolactin could be another differential diagnosis, they need to be ruled out. So these are something that are commonly encountered. There is another differential diagnosis which is less commonly encountered but very very important because has significant consequences all right and that is anything in life with which is uncommon and has significant consequences cancer right so tumor malignancy that is what is of concern here and please remember friends I told you what are the sources of androgens what are the sources of androgens in an adult female now in an adult female the sources of androgens are the ovary they are the adrenal glands and they are obviously the peripheral fat cells. So these are the sources of androgen. So any tumor arising from the ovary which secretes androgen, any tumor arising from the adrenal gland which secretes androgens, right? And obviously excessive obesity can contribute to abnormal hair growth and its features, all right? So very, very important, the fourth differential becomes ovarian tumors, which needs to be ruled out. The fifth differential becomes adrenal tumors. And lastly, once nothing is found out, there is another differential which is called as Heron syndrome hair on syndrome all right so very very importantly where ha stands for hyperandrogenism ha stands for hyperandrogenism 
IR stands for insulin resistance, okay? And AN stands for acanthosis nigricans. Acanthosis nigricans. So basically, this Heron syndrome, you can remember, is just nothing but a severe form of polycystic ovarian syndrome where the hair growth and the features of insulin resistance are going to be much, much more severe. The uh, androgen excess features are going to be much, much more severe. So that is what is hair on syndrome, nothing but a severe form of polycystic ovarian syndrome. So these are the differentials we have to keep in mind while evaluating this woman. So the presence of ovarian tumors, you know, can be elicited by a simple physical examination as well. So please, friends, whenever you are evaluating any woman with any complaint, do not forget a general physical and a gynecological examination which can give us cues towards the diagnosis, you know, in the initial beginning only. All right, so very, very important to keep a physical examination also in mind. Maybe it's an ovarian tumor which can be simply picked up by doing a normal per abdominal and a simple per vaginal examination. And if there is a suspicion of ovarian tumor, further confirmation can be done by an ultrasound as well. So please friends remember, now I will give you a simple flow chart to understand how do we proceed in such a case scenario. So friends, whenever we see a woman with moderate to severe hirsutism, okay? Moderate to severe hirsutism, basically you can simply say that you can look for the number of sites involved with abnormal hair growth. The more the number of sites involved, the greater the degree. And patient distress, the woman's distress with hirsutism is very, very significant in knowing whether it is moderate or severe. So friends, whenever there is moderate to severe hirsutism, which can be elicited by a history and clinical examination, whether the hirsutism is severe or not please look for please look for irregular menses whether present or not okay that is important look for signs clinical signs of excess so whenever the androgens are raised significantly there can be features of virilizations feature of virilization features like temporal balding okay features like deepening of the voice features like breast atrophy features like clitoromegaly so all of these features mean that the androgen levels are severely raised and these features are suggestive of virilization and these four important features you should look for, you should ask for whenever a woman comes with moderate to severe hirsutism. It's a very important clinical guide to assess how severe the androgen excess is. So it gives a rough clinical idea. After doing this clinical idea, the one hormone that you need to test more, most importantly is serum testosterone serum testosterone also do not forget to rule out hyperprolactinemia and uh, hypothyroidism so serum tsh and serum prolactin levels are also done to rule out the common endocrinological conditions now once the serum testosterone levels are more than 150 nanograms per deciliter more than or equal to 150 nanograms per deciliter these are very very high for a female these are high for a female so always then we should think of ruling out ovarian or adrenal gland tumors so the next investigation is a transvaginal sonography 
to rule out any ovarian tumor. So ovarian tumor can be picked up simply by an ultrasound most of the times. So, all right, and after that, androgen producing ovarian tumor. Okay, androgen producing ovarian tumor. Not all ovarian tumors produce androgens, by the way. So, apart from that, if there is no ovarian tumor, okay, if the ovaries are normal, then one should always go for an adrenal gland evaluation. Adrenal gland evaluation to rule out any adrenal gland tumor but friends if the serum testosterone comes out to be less than 150 less than 150 nanogram per deciliter right and there is no feature of virilization and there is Slowly progressive hirsutism, slowly progressive hirsutism, okay. That means the androgen access that is happening, androgen excess that is happening is something that is happening over a long period of time and the levels are also not significantly raised. If this is the condition that is encountered, then the diagnosis is likely polycystic ovarian syndrome okay so this is a brief review this is a brief guide to how to go about managing and diagnosing moderate to severe hirsutism and that is the difference there that you will start thinking about other causes like ovarian tumor and adrenal gland tumors when the clinical profile changes when the hirsutism is very severe when the hair growth is very severe when the hirsutism is rapidly progressive so very very important to take a good clinical history, a good clinical examination, and then following this flowchart. Thank you.